Today I'm sharing with you what I'm growing in fall 2022 and we're doing a seed giveaway. Let's go. Hey there, welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. My name is Veronica and on this channel I teach people how to garden and homestead in suburbia, um, in a suburban urban environment in small spaces. So if that sounds good, don't forget to subscribe. Today I'm sharing with you exactly what I am growing for our fall 2022 season and I'm super excited because there are some things I've never grown before, a lot of new things I'm adding in. Um, and I'm doing a giveaway on this channel as well. Um, I will be giving away six seed packets of things that I love, things I've grown before, some things that I'm growing today. Um, the actual seed packets are a surprise, so they will be announced on my, um, on my seed starting video. I will announce the winner of the giveaway and what they won, the specific seed packets, but it is a total of six packets um, of things that I would highly recommend to anyone watching this video um, no matter where you are so that is what you will be winning um, the giveaway instructions all right the giveaway information if you will um, first of all you must be subscribed to this channel second of all you must leave a comment in this video telling me what zone you are in um, and what is your favorite thing to grow for example I am in zone 9b and my favorite thing to grow is tomatoes specifically cherry tomatoes all right so those are the two things that you need to do to enter you must be subscribed and you must leave a comment with that information on this video below all right so the giveaway starts right now as soon as this video is published um, and also it ends on the date I'm going to be displaying right here in front of me um, once I calculate it out on the day I'll be publishing that video I will leave it right here that is the end date of the giveaway um, which is when I will be publishing my seed starting video um, and also announcing the winner of the giveaway and what specific seed packets they are winning and if you want a bonus entry all right in addition to those two things you can go and follow me over at mini.urban.farm on Instagram all right I will leave that also here on the screen somewhere so go follow me over there for an extra bonus entry to the giveaway all right, so now everything that I will be growing, I cannot wait to share with you guys because it is tons of new stuff. Um, so let's jump right into it. All right, so you can see I have a whole mess of seeds over here on my seed starting table, um, along with some of my other plants. Um, this, actually I wanted to show you guys because I started this from seed last season. This is my Moringa um, tree. This is one tree, it's gotten quite tall. And then this is the other one, um, which is actually dying a little bit. So I went ahead and topped it, which means I just cut it right there um, so that is about three maybe two and a half feet or so um, and that was like a week ago and look at this you guys I mean there's just tons of new growth on it um, I was a little skeptical but definitely a good choice um, this seems like it's going to be doing really well and then this one I'll probably start taking some of the leaves off of this because look how gorgeous that is and I started this from seed not that long ago all right so I have divided them up for my own sanity I've divided up in, into categories I will be starting over here with my tomatoes because that is my favorite thing to grow um, let me share with you all right so I am growing a few different types of tomato varieties this season um, first and foremost I am growing my Roma tomatoes which I grow every season which I love they are my paste tomato um, I have some from Burpee here and some from Baker Creek it's the exact same um, Roma tomato so that is something that I will always grow because I love the way that they grow they are a determinate tomato um, and they don't get that big but I've had really good success with these all right we do um, tomato sauce we do paste we do a whole bunch of different things just with these tomatoes and I don't usually eat them fresh um, we get a whole bunch every season so I will continue to grow that probably forever um, because that is something that I absolutely love I always grow one determinate variety usually this, um, and a indeterminate variety, usually more than one indeterminate, indeterminate variety because I love trellising my tomatoes. So for my indeterminate variety, um, I'm growing two new things this season, um, one of which is the Berries Crazy Cherry Tomato, all right, and it looks exactly like that um, in theory. I've never grown it before. But I'm hoping it looks exactly like that, just giant clusters of these beautiful yellow um, cherry tomatoes. So. I will see um, if our trellis can support it, but I will be growing hopefully at least seven or eight of these different plants, um, this type of plant, because I am super excited for some yellow tomatoes. I don't think I've ever actually grown yellow tomatoes. I've grown black beauty tomatoes, I've grown orange tomatoes, and now the yellow tomatoes. So let's see. And then the last type of tomato I'll be growing is actually not from seed. I will be growing um, store-bought tomatoes. All right, so let me show you exactly what it is it is a grape tomato all right it looks ooh, i can get it up here just like this 
Um, just basically a nice grape tomato. These ones have been sitting on the countertop for a little bit, um, but the seeds are still perfectly fine. Um, and so I will be growing these ones. Some of them are like a little bit more heart-shaped, but generally it's a grape tomato. Um, so I have grown these in the past, um, not this specific like brands, but this is a, Milo's peeing on the lawn. I'm gonna wait for Milo to finish doing his business in front of me. All right, so um, I will be growing these tomatoes. This is something I bought, I believe, at like Publix or Winn-Dixie or I don't know, some grocery store around here. Um, it is organic tomatoes, right? So I wanted to make sure that they were organic, um, but it's a grape tomato, essentially. The reason I'm growing from seed, well, two reasons. Number one, I've done this before, all right? My very first several years of growing tomatoes, these were all I grew, all right? I didn't start tomatoes from seeds. I didn't buy them from the store, um, like transplants. I just bought tomatoes from like the grocery store and I planted them out and they were wildly prolific, all right? Um, they are probably a hybrid variety. Um, most commercial production varieties are not heirlooms, um, meaning that if you continue saving the seeds and then replant and replant and replant, um, they will eventually start looking a little bit different than the original tomato, which is why I stopped growing them. All right, in my last garden, I would grow these nonstop um, and they were just so prolific. I've yet to find a variety of cherry indeterminate grape tomato that looked like this, that had the same flavor um, because I was growing only heirlooms. So I'm just gonna do what I did before I'm going back to basics and starting this. Um, and we shall see how they grow, but I'm really looking forward to it because the last several varieties of cherry tomatoes that I have grown, um, while I did like them, they didn't have quite the right flavor that I'm used to. Um, so I'm gonna try growing these and we'll see. The last variety, the Risentrop, I think, is called the Risentrop tomatoes, were absolutely gorgeous and they were very prolific. Um, I had several problems with pest um, and like them cutting off the the stems and the flowers and all of that, I think that they probably would have been significantly more prolific if I took care of the pests problem a little bit sooner. Um, but that is a lesson learned for last season's garden and I would definitely recommend those ones as well. All right, so next up are our beans. Um, I love growing bush beans. Actually, I love growing pole beans, but I love growing tomatoes more <laughs> and I only have a certain amount of trellis space. So priority is just you know, gotta come in somewhere. Um, I do love growing pole beans. The pole beans I've grown in the, in the past have been wildly prolific. I mean, like I pick an entire bowl of them and then two or three days later, I go back out again and pick another bowl and that lasts the entire season. Um, those were the old homestead pole beans, but they are not stringless, all right? So I have learned that my family will not eat pole beans or <clears throat> any type of bean if they're not stringless and for good reason, they are definitely much better when they're stringless. So I have stuck to some stringless varieties. Now, um, you can get pole beans in stringless varieties just like these ones. Um, so I will probably do that when I have more trellising space in my dream garden that we are currently building on our two acre property, um, but that won't be ready for like another year or so. Um, so in the meantime, I'm conserving my trellis space and I'm growing these beans. The first of which, oh, um, these are actually the same type of bean. Um, these are the Blue Lake Bush Beans, which I have grown for several seasons now. They are super prolific. I absolutely love them. Um, this one is a Seeds of Change. I think somebody gave me these packets. And then these are the burpee ones that just I had unopened. Um, so instead of buying new ones, I just, I'm gonna combine them. Um, and I also have some that I seed saved from last season. I actually seed saved these guys. So um, if I run out of these ones and I'll dip into that stash. Um, these ones are really good. They have a really um, good flavor. They are stringless. They grow really fast. I think it's like 50 or 55 days. They were the first things that were um, that were coming into harvest in my garden last season. I grow bush beans, right? These are all bush beans. I grow bush beans every season. Um, and last season, I believe I spaced them maybe like seven per square foot and that was a really good combination. They didn't get super attacked with pests. Um, even when the tomatoes right next to them were getting attacked, these ones mostly stayed away from it, um, but they, they were so prolific and I will never stop growing them probably. The same thing um, with my yellow wax beans. So I have grown in the past Cherokee yellow wax beans and I've also grown these ones. These are the ones that I grew last season, all right, and they were really good. Um, they weren't as prolific as my, my um, green bush beans but they did really well also. And I do have a lot of these seeds saved. Um, so in order to save a little bit of money this season, instead of buying Cherokee wax beans, um, I'm gonna use the rest of the packet from last season, plus some of them that I have seed saved. And then I'm gonna give them one more chance. Let's see if they can maybe 
um, produce a little bit more. If they do, then I'll probably continue growing these. If not, then I will switch back to Cherokee yellow wax beans, but these have a very similar taste, so I will be growing those for my beans. All right, so in addition to all the herbs I have growing there, right, I have lemon bob, which I started from seed last season, which has just taken over. Um, I have oregano, which I actually bought from the store as a transplant, and I put it in there, also has completely taken over. Um, I do have some lemon basil, which is a volunteer. I had that in previous seasons in that little space and I haven't seen it since and now that it has more space it just popped its head up again. I have scallions and I have tons of flat leaf parsley um, but I'm also going to go ahead and sew out some flat leaf parsley. Um, I just fold it over so that it doesn't all spill out um, but this is the same as I planted out last season. This is giant um, giant of Italy from Baker Creek. I absolutely love this parsley. If you take well, like one packet and you scatter it in maybe a four foot area or so, you will have parsley forevermore. Last season, I harvested just mounds of parsley and we have been using frozen parsley um, in everything imaginable. And I still have parsley popping itself up in random places in the garden, so I would definitely recommend this one. Um, and then I have all of my um, my salad greens so let me put this one down all right so last season i did not grow swiss chard um i believe this is yes burpees swiss chard i think it's called magic lights or maybe oh rhubarb chard so i have grown this one which is the rhubarb chard i've grown swiss lights which instead of having like these red stems they have all different color stems which is really pretty um they taste the same to me so whatever i found <laughs> this is like the first seed packet that i had from a few seasons ago um they should still be pretty good and so i will be growing this last season i did not grow any actually um because i grew it two seasons ago and it got eaten alive but i am growing it now because i will not be growing mustard um, this season. I absolutely love growing mustard and it does so well, especially in fall. Japanese um, Japanese red giant mustard, something like that. Um, it's like a purple color and it's beautiful, but I'm the only one who likes to eat it. Um, so nobody else here really likes the flavor of that. Um, and the only other person that likes it is my dad who lives several states over. So when he comes down, he and I eat it. Um, and I try to sneak it into some salads, but really nobody likes it besides me. So I will be replacing it from some Swiss chard. And I have a whole bunch of new salad greens, most of which I've never heard of. Um, but I am going to experiment this season. So let's start with the first ones that I always grow. And I can tell you more about these. Um, I am going to be growing my dazzling blue kale from Baker Creek. This is beautiful kale um it's like that purpley greenish color um i have grown this i believe for one or two seasons now i started with red russian kale i think it was and that was like completely just getting attacked with pests non-stop i switched over to this a few seasons back and i have had some issues with pests but for the most part like if you catch it early this does really well and what i'm going to be doing with i think most of my salad greens we'll see but especially with my kale and my swiss chard um, what i will be doing is starting it in my little mini greenhouse here as little transplants and then putting them out into the garden for when they're a little bit bigger because we do have a lot of cutworms and the cutworms were just cutting through the stems of these of course as the name implies um, and so this was getting attacked a lot when i started from seed but the, the last season that i grew it it was so prolific and i just I was able to save tons of it um, after the growing season was over. So I will definitely be recommending this and growing it um, in my garden this season. The same with my arugula. Um, this is just plain old arugula. I think it's called rocket arugula. Um, this one is from Baker Creek, but really you can get it anywhere. Um, I would highly recommend arugula to anybody who is in a warm climate um, and you wanna plant salad greens all year round. Actually, I would recommend all three of these. These are like my little combination. All right, kale, Swiss chard, and my arugula um, is really like how I grow salad greens in the heat. We're in Florida zone 9B, so even in the winter time, it doesn't get super cold, um, and I'm able to grow these all year round. And they don't bolt, um, so that's or they don't really <laughs> bolt. Um, but my arugula, I absolutely love. We add it to eggs. I use tons of it. I feed it to chickens. In fact, all of these things I feed to chickens. Um, and this really never gets any pests, probably because it's like such a bitter, peppery flavor so those are like the three that I would definitely recommend plus red mustard um, if you want to add in some spice now my other ones here um, these three I have never grown all of them from Baker Creek um, I have some corn salad here 
I hear this is like a sweet flavor. Um, it's supposed to be like nutty kind of. I've never actually grown corn salad, but it says that it's cold hardy. Um, so hopefully it'll get a little colder this season and this will do really well, but I'm really excited to try this. I've had this for a little while now and I've just never grown it, so excited to try it this season. Um, these two were free seed from Baker Creek, all right? So if anyone orders from Baker Creek, they usually send you a free seed packet. This is called Mizuna. Um, Benny, Benny? Haushi? I think is how you say it. I'm probably butchering that, but it's a Japanese heirloom plant with purple stems um, and like some dark green leaves. And it's supposed to be a really delicate flavor, but the reason that I chose to actually add this this season is because it is really cold and really heat resistant and tolerant. All right, it says adapted to both extreme heat and cold. So if you are in a extreme heat and cold environment, like I am, definitely try growing this. Um, I will let you know how it goes this season, but it's really pretty. Um, so we shall see. Um, and then Komatsuna. All right, old Tokyo Komatsuna. Um, this is also a Japanese vegetable. Um, it's supposed to be a little bit more like spinach. Um, so we'll see how it goes, but it's really pretty as well. So I will probably be planting a mix of these three and then separating out some space for my other salad greens. Of course, fall would not be complete without some squash. I'm going to grow burby. Um, I think it's Waltham butternut squash. Can you see that? There you go. So winter squash and the little fine print there, Waltham butternut squash. Um, these do really well. I did plant them out, um, I believe, last fall season and they didn't get too big, but I think I planted them in the wrong place. I have grown these in my previous garden and they were really good. So um, I did get quite a few squash off them. I am going to have to figure out a way to shield them from powdery mildew, um, but I really like growing this. So that is the one type of squash I'm growing this season. And then I will be growing um, some Brussels sprouts, right? These are the, I think it's called Growinger Brussels sprouts from Baker Creek. That is how you spell that. All right, um, and these were the ones that I have in like one of my favorite photos of my garden. Um, it is just beautiful Brussels sprouts and me sitting behind it, um, but they get like really big. I'm sure most Brussels sprouts do, but these are the only ones I've ever grown. Um, and I really like using the leaves. I cut the leaves and steam them and then use them as like lettuce wraps, um, but they have a really good flavor. So that is one of the new things I'm going back to. And then this is something completely new that I'm growing. It is a Yadfa Chinese broccoli. So I love broccoli, my family loves broccoli, um, but these ones are supposed to be very fast maturity, 55 days, and then it's also um, supposed to be really good heat resistance. So if it happens that the temperature does not get cold, like last season, it didn't really get chilly um, until like January, then hopefully, <laughs> We'll have some broccoli either way. Um, these are supposed to be not like a broccoli head, but it's more of like, if you can see the stems there, they're more of like a broccoli flower type thing. It's, it also says it's like a cross between asparagus and broccoli. So both of which we love. So let's see how these go. All right, so when the weather gets a little bit cooler, I am planning on planting out some beets. These are not beets, radishes, um, some radishes. These are French breakfast radishes um, absolutely gorgeous I have grown these before um, they're really quick to maturity and they're just like that classic radish flavor um, I'm really the only one who likes radishes so with the abundance of radishes I've grown in the past I have pickled them in some vinegar and turmeric um, and made like a quick pickle type thing they're really good um, but I've made the mistake of planting out tons of these in the past and then I'm the only one who eats them well myself and the chickens um, so I'll be planting out some of these when the weather gets a little bit cooler Probably not a ton of them because I don't want to waste them. All right, and then we are adding in some carrots. All right, so I am growing an orange carrot that I grew last season. This is called Little Finger Carrots. Um, they are a like a three inch kind of carrot. They're like a baby-ish carrot. Um, I did get quite a few of these last season. Um, I prefer bigger carrots, but this is what I had. So I'm gonna grow this um, just because I didn't want to 
overextend myself and get tons of different varieties and so I figured I'd use these up first. I do like them. Um, they have a really good flavor and they're perfect for pickling because they fit perfectly in that jar. Um, and then I have some purple carrots which is what I'm really looking forward to growing. Um, these are called purple dragon um, and so they are supposed to be orange on the inside and like that beautiful red purple color on the outside um, and they're they get pretty big I think like that normal seven to eight inch carrot which is like a normal carrot so I am super excited to grow this the kids are also super excited to grow this one um, they just love like ripping the carrots out and seeing how big they got really so any carrots but this is what I'm growing hopefully it gets a little bit colder because last season it didn't get that cold and I did struggle a little bit with the carrots all right so the last thing that I am not sure if I'll be growing, to be honest with you guys, um, are some flowers, all right? So I was planning on starting these a little bit earlier, but just with everything in life, you know, everything that's been going on around here, um, I didn't really get to. I will probably still try to start them. Um, not all of the packets, right? Like not everything inside the packets. I'll try to start a few of them. I would really like to bring in some more pollination, um, more pollinators to my garden. So in addition to the herbs, which I let set seeds and flower and bolt and all those things, those do bring in a lot of like bees and different types of pollinators. Um, but I would like to accelerate it. Um, and I would just like some really pretty flowers in the garden. Now, flower growing in Central Florida gets, I think a little bit tricky. I've never really grown flowers. I've only managed to grow one flower one time, um, which is a petunia, and it took like three seasons to grow, so I think I did it wrong. Um, but these ones are all supposed to be um, things that grow relatively faster. And so hopefully with my research that I've done this season, I'll be able to grow some of this. Whoops. So the first one is a chocolate cherry sunflower. These are absolutely gorgeous. My intent was to grow them for fall um, and start them probably last month, um, which of course did not happen, but hopefully I will still get a few of them. They are 60 to 75 days to maturity. Um, so if you calculate that out, I think I still have some time that I will be able to get some of these, um, at least like a bunch of them maybe, um, to, put, to be able to put like in an arrangement. Um, I think the rest of them, I picked things that were pretty heat tolerant. All right, so if it doesn't get colder, these will grow just fine. Um, is the white polar bear zinnia. All right, so I've been doing some research on zinnias. This is absolutely beautiful. Um, and these, I believe zinnias, like they grow in like multiple per plants. Um, so it's not like a one cut type of thing like most sunflowers. Um, but these ones hopefully will contrast really well with like that dark purple color. So we shall see. And then Peruvian zinnia, which definitely looks a little bit different. All right, these don't look like other zinnias, but they are from South America and they get like two feet tall. All right, and it specifically says, attract pollinators to the bed on the back of the seed packet. So I just think that they're really pretty and they grow multiple per plant. Um, definitely different than the other ones. They look more like Cosmos, if you ask me. Which brings me to my Cosmos that I'll be growing. I got Rubinado Cosmos, um, which is a compact dwarf variety. Um, these are from Baker Creek. Um, and then they're supposed to be like a silky kind of look to them. Um, I actually, I absolutely love Cosmos. Um, and I think they do pretty well like now this time of year in this region. So um, that is what I'll be growing now. Um, I'll, attempting to grow now um, because I've never actually grown flowers before. But one day in my dream garden, what I imagine is having my vegetable garden um, interlaced with rows and rows of flowers um, that I can use for cutting and taking inside and gifting and all of those things. So that is my, my long term, meaning like next year type of goal um, with my garden that I will have a lot more space in, a lot more space to dedicate to solely growing flowers. But flowers are a great way to attract pollinators to your garden. Um, so instead of having to come out and hand pollinate like zucchini plants for instance you have a lot more um, free work <laughs> from like those pollinator plant uh, pests or not pests pollinator insects that come out here and just help spread pollen and just do their job good insects that are great for the garden um, beneficial insects and I just want to attract more of them in the garden so that is everything for what I will be growing this season. Um, don't forget to enter the giveaway. If you haven't already, comment below with what zone you're in and your favorite thing to grow. Um, subscribe to this channel and for a bonus entry, subscribe to my Instagram channel, mini.urban.farm. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I cannot wait to start my seeds um, 
and I will see you in the next one. Bye.